Okay, so my name is Karsten Monk. I'm a board director at the Cartesi Foundation, and I'm here to do a little bit of a futuristic hot take about where we're going in this whole modular space. And I would like to say that we are truly in the future now that we can actually use GIFs and animations as our titles for our paper presentations. So, <clears throat> let me just click over the right wheel. So, but before that, uh, because I'm from Cartesi, uh, imagine uh, kind of like a blockchain alternative virtual machine existed. There was general purpose enough to even run something like Ubuntu Linux or Doom, and that's essentially what Cartesi is. And it's basically, it's a VSC5 emulator, it's fully reproducible, deterministic, it emulates a single CPU, it's something that you can prove in a verification uh, game manner, or you can prove it in something like ZK using something like VSC0. It's completely open source, programmable, it's an API. And why is um, RISC-V and uh, Linux kind of important? And the reason why it's important is because if you're kind of looking out there, kind of like how people are traditionally building software at the moment, they use languages they know, you use uh, runtimes that they know, and while you can do something like, let's say, a unikernel or something like a Tesla machine, as in just a pure thing that's basically your app is the operating system, like for some people are doing WASM, as you get more and more complicated applications, basically it ends up essentially looking like a Linux kernel. So that's why we're kind of thinking it's important that you can actually run something like uh, a Linux machine this. And too long didn't read, it's a provable, verified, Linux-capable alternative VM that you can use for your chains. So what I'm trying, like, trying to say here a little bit here is that uh, this is a tweet from Hayden from Uniswap where he puts out that rollups are just chains and chains are just servers with superpowers like let's say history can be verified. It's something where for example sequencers and data publishing is kind of like making it happen. Verification is about virtual machines, verification games, proofs and so on. It's servers that are kind of accessible to everybody. It can't be shut off like technologies like IPFS, Ethereum and so on. And it's servers that can kind of interrupt well with other servers, like basically, or what we're talking about, let's say, in bridging, it's actually kind of closer to networking, and I'll kind of get to that a little bit in my talk here. And one of the things that I want to say is that if you're looking at kind of like all the different solutions people are building right now, you're usually finding these servers running something like Linux on traditional CPUs, not and uh, typically running, let's say, JavaScript or Rust or something like that, but but there's not a lot of, let's say, wasm out there, despite all the, let's say, attention that's actually happening in the industry, especially in blockchain around that. And what I think that it, basically, the modularity is closer, much closer to kind of like the design of a, let's say, a verifiable decentralized data center in practice. Of course, anchored in like things like Ethereum, and basically that we'll be seeing, let's say, a billion of different virtual machines and, let's say, virtual machine instances on top of this. So to continue the analogy a little bit, um, I see sequences and data availability Sorry. as kind of like being the world world uh, area network interfaces of this, let's say, world cloud. This is kind of like my favorite table from the Expresso documentation, basically. Uh, it's a kind of like reference. It's, I mean, if we're looking kind of like when we started kind of like having servers and internet and so on. This is pretty much a 200 megabit per second link to our world computer, our world cloud in this particular case. And this is kind of like a link that all these virtual machines can share. And being able to kind of take this, the packets or the information and, and blocks and so on coming in from it, and being able to kind of take it in as a data source and pick out kind of like what's relevant for them to actually process. and. Amazingly, it happens at like, let's say, bursts, it's almost like a, a second apart, if not less, as kind of like things like pre-confirmations kind of come on. And sequence of the data availability is kind of like uh, the world area, net, world area networks out to users who send the inbound transactions, and then technologies like, let's say, IPFS, Filecoin, and all the kind of state querying methods is more like, the, let's say, the outbound part to people. Within the kind of like the world cl cloud as this, we kind of have, let's say, many different uh, communication methods, almost like kind of having virtual local area networks between our virtual machines. I'm taking this kind of from, let's say, a cloud, a more traditional point of view, um, that kind of like allow these different things to kind of like exist as a whole, as a world cloud. Also, making it kind of easier for us to kind of think about 
how can these different topologies make it easier for us to kind of reason about how, let's say, our different virtual machines, instances, and the kind of can communicate with each other, we can have verifiable programmable network switches, routers, et cetera. And I think especially as things like Eigenlayer come along, uh, come along where also in Catesi we are playing around with doing Linux coprocessors, um, it basically allows us to do more sanity and let's say easier to express and reason about and more, more security uh, for most of these kind of uh, uh, topics and allowing us to kind of construct meaningful primitives that allow people to construct actual what matches the solution. Of course, similarly to kind of like when you're look, connecting, let's say, your laptop to uh, Ethernet, uh, something like that, that's, that's more or less trust. Like, for example, let's say if you're in the open compared to when you're on your own home network, there might be less trust in kind of like what you uh, want to accept in terms of packages and so on. And I, this is kind of like much how, let's say, elements in a cloud solution would look like. This is kind of like my own take on how we can kind of approach building a world cloud. There's many, many other kind of solutions that might fit in, like for example, Celestia, Avail, uh, or Avail, or other kind of ZK toolkits, maybe to the kind of different layers, like for example, it might be that with things like BitVM, it might be that I think people want to start anchoring some of these things into, for example, Bitcoin. And it's something like a world cloud, in this particular case, moving from a world computer as kind of was defined before. Is it more like a subset or a superset of modularity? Or, I don't know, but I kind of like the direction it kind of enables in reasoning and simplicity of solutions. And just to add to that, uh, I just want to give kind of like a sneak peek of what we're doing in Cartesi. This is a dev environment uh, in the browser. I fetch within a few minutes uh, in it. It's possible within 10 minutes to build a Python 3 Docker container, build it for WISC-5, which is this alternative uh, instruction format into a container, making it executable inside the verifiable, reproducible Cartesian machine, attach it to something like, for example, the Expresso Gibraltar testnet, effectively giving this virtual machine that you see here running, kind of like standard code, uh, this shared 200 megabits per second world area interface, and just in, just in 10 minutes after installation. And I think we're getting to a point in blockchain industry where we don't really have any excuse anymore for having let's say a bad developer experience because we need to kind of go out and grow the pie of developers because like the pie of developers that are developing let's say solidity in the vm they're kind of like stagnating at this point and we need to be able to make people let's say able to jump in to blockchain much easier and with what they already know and i i don't really feel that we need more custom languages because even if you're looking at kind of like network and so on we only apply these kind of tools in areas where it gives clear difference performance and end user experience. And you can always iterate with something like this and start out with a Linux container with, let's say, even the worst possible JavaScript, and then over time kind of like upgrade it to it. And this is kind of like personally why I feel like something like Katesi is interesting, kind of the modular narrative. And that's it. So if you want to ask any questions or anything, I think we might skip questions because we're a little behind on time. But you're welcome to kind of like find us around here. If you want to know more about Cartes or Cartes Machine, you can do this or join our Discord, which is quite, let's say, technical. And that's it. <laughs>